In this video, I will demonstrate how to build tones while drawing. I will teach you about drawing pencils and when and how to use them. And I will demonstrate the drawing technique of crosshatching. But this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. You have the option to follow along. I decided to go the extra mile and provide you with the worksheet for the final segment of this video. Take a second to go to MerrillK.com and type in shading resource. Print it out and do your best. We have a lot to cover, so let's start out with learning about pencils. Hey, it's Merrill. I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on pencils. Um, I'm sure you've uh, stopped by the art supply store and you see a bunch of letters uh, such as H and B. Um, and uh, possibly you don't know what they mean. Uh, I'm hoping to clarify that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that. Um, I made a little bit of a scale here and it goes from lightest to darkest. Um, so, lightest pencil uh, that I've ever seen is an 8H and the scale could go, uh, at least on the HB scale, uh, up to 8B. There are darker pencils out there that I will show you in a second, um, but in terms of the letter lettered pencils uh, that you'll see in art supply stores, you know, such as this one is a 2H, um, you know, this is the scale for that. Uh, let's take a look at the tones that an 8H leaves. Uh, I'm going to add equal pressure uh, when I'm doing each one of these. I have eight. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this is a 2H right here, so this would be right about here. Ooh, sorry about the mistake there, but I think you get the point. Um, HB pencil, you really don't need to spend too much money on this. If you look at this, um, hopefully this will prove it, uh, a number 2 pencil is an HB pencil. And um, if you go to art supply stores, uh, really, if you get an HB pencil, they're charging you two, three dollars for um, that, a number two pencil, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, you're going to get neutral tones with this. And I also put um, harder and softer. The B's are a lot softer. Um, if you use a blending stump, it's a lot easier to move this than, say, this. You know, if you wanted to move things around, um, I'll zoom in so that you could see that. Um, but that's helpful to know as well. 8B pencil, I do not think I have an 8B, but I have a 4B here. Um, no, I have a 7B, here we go. So this is actually close to this, this would be about here. Leaves a very dark mark. And it's also very easy to move, even easier to move than the HB. Um, if you plan on blending in this method. Um, darker pencils. There are ebony pencils, uh, which leaves a darker tone than the 8B pencil. And the darkest pencil that I've found, at least, um, would be uh, Prismacolor's Black. So I use that for the darkest tones. I wanted you to see cross hatching at regular speed, so I'm drawing this apple, and I'm going to use the HB pencil, uh, and I'm just going to start out making lines. When you cross hatch, you are slowly developing things. Um, you don't really want to press too hard; you just want to let the layers build up the tones. Uh, now I'm going to do a second layer, uh, again with the HB pencil. Although you you could choose any pencil that you want, uh, it's at a slightly different angle and that's all I wanted to highlight. Alright, so let's get you started. Um, I'm observing the picture and you know, hopefully you printed out uh, the resource that I gave you and you're looking at the picture as well. Get in the habit of looking once every five seconds, uh, or if not more. Uh, that should be uh, just a rule that uh, you should get used to. It's a great habit to get into. Um, next I am looking at uh, all of the different tones and all of the shapes that are left for me. Uh, and I'm just, I'm trying to put those in. I'm trying to see them and put them in. Uh, it helps my eye uh, to put the dark ones in first. Although, as I said in the step before, you know, you don't want to go too dark. You want to slowly build things up. So that's what's on my mind right now.
I'm speeding up the video a little bit. I'm going to slow it down again uh, to highlight something else in just a few seconds. But I want you to notice that I am not uh, picking a favorite spot. Uh, a lot of people get in the habit of having that favorite spot that they keep working and adding layers to. Uh, I'm making sure that the entire area is covered before I go on and add more layers. So let's actually slow it down again. This is probably the most important segment of the video. Um, I pretty much have the shapes all figured out now, and in a second, you're going to see me switch pencils. There we go. Um, I am going to the uh, 4B pencil right there, and you're going to see me put in the darker tones. My eye is going uh, to the, uh, the darker areas, and you know now is where I'm really starting to work in those tones. But again, I'm not just doing it by pressing super hard. Um, you do need to put a little bit more pressure, not to confuse you, but uh, I'm not pressing too hard. I I'm counting on layers more so than anything. And I'm, I'm layering uh, the darks, uh, one, uh, one layer on top of the other. And it's time consuming, but uh, if you rush it, you wind up denting your paper. Um, and you're not going to really like the results if you do that, because the shading will be inconsistent. Um, what you see me resting my hand on is called a slip sheet. It's just that I don't smudge things. And if you look closely, you might see me do uh, some hatching and some shape making with my eraser. And we're going to speed it up again in a second. Right here, you're seeing me continue to layer and build up the darker tones. And I'm going to slow it down in a second to show you a uh, cool trick on how to do straight lines. So let's slow it down. I apologize, you're going to have to look fast, but look at how I use the edge of the card. Uh, just in case if the lines go over, um, you know, the, uh, the pencil markings would go on top of the card, uh, enabling me to make a straight line. Um, I just did it again a second ago, uh, and it, it's it's a nice here we go. It's a nice handy way of uh, making sure that you get uh, you know no loose marks. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, sometimes you have to get creative. All right, I'm going to let this play to the end on medium speed, so let's recap. Um, you want to start out with a light to neutral pencil and go darker as you go on. I started out with the HB. That's my personal preference. Works for me. You don't have to, but that's what I would recommend. Um, each row of hatches should be done at a slightly different angle to the previous row. Um, it's kind of tough to see that with the video moving so fast, but trust me, it did happen, and it will make a difference, uh, especially in building up those layers. Um, when you cross hatch, um, build up your tone slowly. You know, we resist the urge to, you know, just press really hard and get those darkest tones. Later on in the piece, you're going to have to do that. But I'm talking about at the beginning to the middle part, don't do that or else you're going to wind up denting the page. Um, and that'll be counterproductive. It'll make things much harder in the future. Uh, if you wanted to make uh, neat hatches uh, or if you needed to make straight lines, uh, use the tip that I gave you with the piece of paper. Uh, put it at the edge of where you're hatching and you know don't be scared to go over it because if you go over, it's going to wind up going on the paper and you know it's uh, yeah, it won't seem sloppy as soon as you remove that paper. Um, keep in mind this piece took me two hours to make. Don't rush it. Take your time um, and good good luck. Uh, the only way that you get better at art is to you know, fully immerse yourself uh, and uh, do your best. So, you know, don't be scared to try this. You might mess up. If you do, try again. Uh, best of luck to you. Thank you for watching the video.